G'day guys and welcome to Raging Rhino. It's time for episode five of season three of The Bad Batch. Now, based on the first four episodes, of course, the writing hasn't actually been all that good. The season so far actually hasn't been all that engaging and all that good. And of course, Omega is just the bestest ever. She's just the best at everything. She's basically a Mary Sue and she's got all the solutions. So I'm wondering to see what sort of solutions she gives in this episode. But the biggest thing that I'm curious about is the dynamic between Hunter and Crosshair and possibly even Wrecker as well. Basically the team and Crosshair and how that's going to actually clash and what resolutions are we going to get from that throughout this episode. So let's get straight into this episode. Of course, if you are new here, you get to see my reactions as I go through the episode. And then at the very end, you get to hear my thoughts and my review of the episode. So let's get straight into this. The Return. Oh my God. <laughs> Straight off the bat, that's almost a one-for-one -one shot of uh, Ahsoka waking up in the ship after she pretty much drowned uh, from the Ahsoka series. The light shining on the face through the, the windscreen of the ship or whatever. It's <laughs> typical Dave Filoni now ripping off himself. He's still adjusting. I bet Watch he is. So there's been a little time jump. They've gone back to the island, I think. That's where they got that fruit from, yeah. Oh, he's still got that shaking hand. You can't keep hiding. You need to talk to Hunter. Oh, Omega's going to have all the solutions. She's going to have all the solutions for them. I wonder what piece of advice she's going to give to Crosshair to help fix him. They don't trust me. Of course they don't trust you, Crosshair. Oh, it's Echo! So Echo finally makes his first appearance. Even Emery wasn't allowed access. Emery? She works for him. Yeah, another female clone of Django. We can get it online. We should be able to pull more intel on Tantus. But hang on. Don't they have the intel that, that Hunter and Wrecker got from episode two? Like that at least gave them the system that they that the new base was in, that Tantus is in, right? Surely they've shared that piece of intel. So yeah, okay, you got the data pad, good. There's some more intel and you're getting some information from Omega and Crosshair. But what about that intel? Hopefully they've actually shared that because Hunter got that so that he could try and save Omega. But what, now that, now that Omega's safe, they, don't, they just disregard that intel? Hmm. Maybe even the coordinates of the base itself. You've Imperial got the system, Hunter. Be a problem. I know a facility. Remote. Understaffed. It shouldn't be a problem to infiltrate. What is he talking about? Crosshair. Oh, they're in agreement. I'm older than you are, little brother. Is that right? I do like this. At least they haven't written it that the, that the rift is repaired just like that, you know? Putting a bit of time and effort into actual Crosshair and Hunter's clash. Oh, we're going back to where Mayday was killed. They were all dealt with. And how do you know that? Because he dealt with yes. them. Yeah. Just. I like the rift. I said talk to him, not argue with him. Like I said, at least the the friendship or the partnership isn't just repaired just like that. They're putting some effort in, at least. Or well, turning off those beacons is going to do something. Oh, all the helmets are still there. And there's Mayday. This would be tough on uh, Crosshair, I reckon. This is the planet he basically defected. The reason why he ended up in Tantus. Yes, let's have this conversation. What did you do to finally get on the Empire's bad side? Betray them, like you did with us? Oh, they got a reaction. Tell me what changed. What happened, Crosshair? Yeah, let's get into it. She went through what she did because you failed. You're angry because she escaped with my help, not yours. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Them some forget go. 
No, don't interrupt them. Oh, man. Oh, down goes the ship. Oh, the ship. At least it's not buried, I guess. I'll handle it. Not alone. We'll do it together. You sure about that? Mm. Come on. I just want to see those two work out the ship. Oh, shit. Why is there always a huge monster? Because they put dinosaurs on the whiteboard. It's gonna go after Hunter underground. Surely. And he's out of there. Hmm. I guess it's a start. See? They always work it out. Oh, I hope they still have a conversation. And what about episode two? What about the intel Hunter and Wrecker got from the old facility and working out a system that the actual new facility has been sent to? He didn't happen to mention that. It makes it, it retroactively makes episode two a complete filler and pointless episode because the whole purpose of that was to rescue Omega. Omega rescued herself and then what? They just discard the the intel that they got from there silly another time jump they've dug, dug the ship out come on let's finish that conversation i think that's going to be the end of the episode yep okay uh well let me just say this it's probably my favorite episode so far for season three uh, it's funny how my favorite episode in season two was also on this planet. The one where he basically shoots the officer, the Imperial officer, and uh, Mayday gets killed. And then in this season, of course, my favorite episode so far is this episode. Now, I still have a couple of issues with it. As I just mentioned, pretty much nearly there at the end of my, my reactions as we were going through, um, it seems that they've completely discarded the intel that they got from episode two, from the old facility in regards to the fact that they at least know a system that they've got to, you know, search, I guess. They've got a bit more intel from uh, Omega, not as much from Crosshair, hopefully it opens up a little bit more. And now they've got some intel from the data pad. So they've got, they've got a, a fair bit of intel. They just don't know the precise location or the precise planet that they've got to go to to basically get to Tantus. But it does seem like the... Intel that they got from episode two has completely been discarded. It wasn't mentioned once in this episode and they're talking about it or they're talking about like Intel and getting information for the planet so they can go and save some clones. Uh, but they, they, they seem to have completely forgotten about episode two and the Intel that they got from that. I will say the best dynamic in this episode is between Hunter and Crosshair um, I, I've said this all along, Crosshair is definitely my favorite character and it's probably because he doesn't say a lot. He doesn't open up a lot. He's actually opened up more in this episode than we've ever seen him before and it's still quite minute in regards to how much he's actually opening up. I kind of wish that Hunter and Crosshair didn't get interrupted by the big snow worm. I don't know what you would call it, but uh, that uh, it kind of like I, I would have liked to have seen those two go at it a little bit, maybe have a little bit of a brawl and then maybe, you know, the worm shows up and that sort of interrupts them. That would have been better. I would have liked that maybe a little bit more because, man, Crosshair was completely going at Hunter for, you know, I sent you the message, you chose to ignore it and you're the one that got Omega captured for, what, three quarters of a, a quarter of a year. So... That was that was good, and I really wanted that to continue. But of course, they got interrupted, and they they basically come up with their solution to get the worm on the outside of the perimeter and set the alarms off again, so that it keeps it out. So that they're actually able to dig their ship out and obviously leave. So, to be honest with you, this episode was probably a bit of a filler episode. They're just going to get some intel. They they've got the data pad, and they they want the information that's on the data pad. So it was probably a little bit of a filler mission, filler episode. But the thing that made this probably the best episode so far is, again, the dynamic between these two characters that you see on screen right now, Hunter and Crosshair. So 
Uh, Omega's still, you know, really good at everything, just does everything. She got converted the power from the, the pillars to the base. And then, of course, instructed Hunter in regards to what to do to get the power back up and running so that they could still have uh, power and the beacons going, all of that sort of thing. But it wasn't really much of an Omega episode, to be honest. A lot of this episode did revolve around Hunter and Crosshair, and I did like that, especially being that Crosshair is my favorite, let's say, Bad Batch character, um, despite the fact that it's Disney Star Wars garbage. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the episode. Oh, before I do go, um, the one other thing that I really liked was uh, finding Mayday's helmet, seeing the emotion, well, also probably the suppressed emotion from Crosshair in that moment. You know, that was the one moment in season two for Crosshair where he realized that the Empire is as bad as what Hunter and all the other guys thought it was. And it kind of left him in no man's land. You know, he didn't have a family. He didn't have his brothers anymore. And what he thought he was doing and doing the right thing was actually the wrong thing. And that's where he, you get this little sort of confession, you could say at the end here, where he's like, I've done things. And Hunter's like, well, you know, I've got regrets too. But all we can really do is keep moving forward and hopefully do better. And I thought that was that's a good little moment. Now, also too, the other thing, is Crosshair's uh, shaking hand. He's, he's uh, nowhere near as good. His abilities aren't as good as they were or as sharp as they were. Now, he has been locked up for a long time. Now, whether or not the shaking hand has something to do with the experiments that they were doing on him at Tantus, or whether or not that's just because he's, he sort of feels like he's lost his edge and he does have those regrets, so that's the thing that's creating this situation for him and the shaky hand and all of that. So we'll have to wait and see what the result of or the reason why he's he's going through this is whether or not it is the experiments that they were doing or whether or not it is just his conscience that's playing games with him so that's pretty much the episode i thought it was the best episode out of all of them let me know your thoughts in the comments below whether or not you think that this is a good episode whether or not you like the series so far what your thoughts are on the entire thing moving forward and uh, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next week for episodes six and seven. It's a double header next week. That's going to be interesting to see what the story is because normally when they do these double header episodes, they're obviously a lot more connected between those two episodes with the story. So hopefully they uh, hopefully they do a good job with that, and uh, we'll see what happens. But again, you got to remember this is Disney Star Wars garbage. So despite the fact that this is my favorite episode so far in the season, you know, it's kind of like with season two, the same planet, favorite episode. It was really good because it was isolated and it was a bit of a filler episode and they did a reasonable job telling a reasonable story and having reasonable character development. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we will see you next week for episodes six and seven. Later, guys.